All right, let's go ahead and um, proceed on with the second phase of a foundation installation. The first thing that we can do is unmount the, uh, or eject the ISO that we had set up for the Oracle binary installer wrapper. And we can go back into our location for our binary installs. I had staged those on this drive, on the E drive, under IT Analytics installers. And I can now go to the actual ISO for the IT Analytics installer. Once again, we just mount the ISO. And again, with uh, clicking on that setup, running that as administrator, we'll launch this installer. Once again, quick uh, checks for vari various requisites. And again, we'll need to scroll through this license agreement in order to be able to accept it. Very fine to go ahead if, if you've done as we are, an installation of the database on the same server. You can leave this as local host. And um, the domain name that would that we would be seeing here in, in my environment, the local domain is called RSV. Uh, so that would be fine. And you can see that we would actually end up with a, a portal URL that would be itanalyticsportal.rsv. So in the case of a business, you might this might be company.com. Oh, you, get, you get the point. Uh, I'll go ahead and leave this as RSV for this purpose. You can update this and change it later if you need to. The other thing is that even though we default location for the basic binaries on the C drive, it's very common that you would not want a lot of content to be written there. And so you would have an opportunity, as we will do so here, to place where the actual data files for Oracle will be created. In my case, my E drive has uh, enough space for, um, for that purpose, for that installation. You can see that I've got just under 200 gigabytes available. So I can click Next here. We get a prompt for the validation that our binaries would go on to the opt and we click next. So at this juncture, the um, basic folders have been created, our services have been created, and uh, the basic Oracle and some of the uh, supporting uh, services have started. As we can see, we're prompted to click Next. And now, um, this next stage will probably be the longest portion of, of the uh, IT Analytics installation, uh, where we're actually going to be creating all the content for uh, the IT analytics schema. So at this stage, we, we have a containerized database. And now what we will begin to see through this installation is creation of a pluggable database that will hold all of the, the schema objects. You'll note at this stage that our minimum startup size for the Oracle instance is 12 gigabytes. That's our default starting sp size and in fact is the minimum size allowed for Oracle um, in our configuration. So we can see in the dialog that just happened that the database has in fact started with that 12 gigabyte size. The IT analytics environment is configured to be largely self-sustaining for its Oracle space. In general, the only DBA database administration required is typically to just make sure that the areas for Oracle and its data files have enough room to grow. Other than that, the wrapper that is IT analytics in conjunction with Oracle does uh, scheduled jobs for maintaining uh, indice refreshes, database cleanup, expiration of data, etc. Most of that is self-sustaining through the application layer. 
as I mentioned, this stage of the career, of the installation can go uh, a very long time. We won't get a lot of interaction from this screen. However, if you have an application like Beartail or want to use Power PowerShell to go ahead and do the equivalent of a Linux tail operation, you can actually go into the location shown, in this case opt apt or, sorry, opt oracle logs and tail. There should be a catalog zero dot log file. And if you watch that file, you'll see that there's a tremendous amount of activity actually occurring at this juncture. It's just not being spooled to this screen. I'm going to pause recording at this juncture because of the known time frame for this. While I was paused and the installer is still running, I went ahead and opened up a PowerShell ISC as we can see behind this installation script. And I ran a PowerShell command that allows us to spool the equivalent of a, a tail, I should say, what's going on in the catproc0.log uh, file. And the main purpose for that, besides the fact that I'm impatient and <laughs> like to like the gratification of seeing things happen, is to share that same information in the video to let folks know that even though this installation top screen doesn't seem to be doing much, if we look at the the, the activity being logged, it's actually tons of um, SQL operations to to continue to create this schema for us. The uh, catalog and cat proc processes are definitely the longest running of these procedures inside this installation process. What I did um, is move the screen up just a little bit and I exposed the PowerShell script that will do the equivalent of a tail command, just in case you wanted to invoke that uh, operation to watch these logs as they're being written to give you some sense that activity is actually occurring. In the screen behind uh, where we were spooling that uh, cat proc file, we can see that the process was terminated and uh, we ended with a disconnection from the database in our installation screen. Then we can also see that we've moved to a new cat OCLK log file. These last three or so log files happen more quickly than I typically even worry about trying to spool them. If you've reached this stage, the long wait is pretty much over. Another checkpoint being recorded here. Um, when we start seeing these creation and dropping, this is the final stages of the installer where the pluggable database core objects have been created and we're now actually in the stages of creating the IT analytics schema objects, the tables, the views, the, the core procedures that are used for data collection, reporting, etc. Um, this phase of the dialogue was, it will be very familiar when you go through patch processes as well for the IT analytics software. We can see the creation of the database is complete and our next button has highlighted. This last screen is significant to potentially even take a screenshot of. Um, the reason for that is it's telling us how to start our portal services from a command prompt. It's also giving us our super user username and the initial password. This screen in and of itself contains a lot of information that we're going to want to be able to continue our venture with uh, finishing in now that we've finished the installation, being able to get into the portal.